Let us pray. We thank you, O Lord, that we have received this day and may it truly be a day of the Lord. And as we meet on Sundays, Lord, we meet on this your resurrection day from the dead. And you're being raised from the dead by the power of God. May it be a day when indeed that resurrection power would raise each and every one out of the grave of sin. And of the tomb of the world. Meet with us, Lord, by your holy word. Amen. Amen. Izwi esiolfunda, siolfunda ngokuka Matthew. Isatlu gusokala, eses kombisa. Ivesi langamashuma mabili nanye. Matthew seven, from verse twenty-one. Asibo bonga ba shoyugi mi uguting kosi kosi abaya kungena mbuswe ni wezulu kupela owenza intando kababa ose zului. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Abani ngi ba ya kutigi mi ngalolo sugu kosi kosi as profetanga ini. Gekamalako, Sakipama de Moning Ekamalako, Sends him seven Zeminin, Giamantra, Ekamalako na. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Konang Yabufaraza Gubo, Uguti, Angizang, and Ginazi, Sugani Gimi, Nina Benzi, Bogubi. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. We'll read thus far. We We're speaking about the text which says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will necessarily enter into heaven only those who do his will. Nyabon Izolo Natakseni Natoluki. Yesterday morning I got a phone call. Abani Gabekola Nam Sanj. Now there are many who are not here today. Intom Beiningi Ziefaya Ziotati Konzo Kon. Many of the girls have gone to a fire to take a service there. In the young men have gone to Claridge there in Peter Maritzburg and yesterday or the day before they'd been there in a, one of the areas lower down there which is a very criminal, a very criminal area, also a squatter camp. So two they were at um, another service there yesterday and then in the evening they went to a tent service, a tent that had been pitched for the whole month. Now you know how usually tent services tend to be 
very noisy affairs. Yesterday morning they had been approached by the Indian pastor from that area and he said, please do come to our church. They said, we're sorry, but we've already arranged an evening service where we've got to be. He said, it doesn't matter, just come for half an hour, then you're released to go back to the service at Claridge. So yesterday after they had spoken in that service, many came to them very grateful that they'd been there. They said, now we can see the real difference between one who says he's a Christian and one who is genuinely a Christian. They said, so many people say we are believers. But, when we see True believers, one can see a difference. There is a great difference. But, but they asked, what can we do to be as you are? And we want to go to the place where you are from. We want a genuine Christianity, not just in word, not a fake thing. We want the real thing. We had a meeting. I had asked one of the hostel girls to give her testimony. After she had spoken, a certain man who was present said, Pastor, He said, you just need to look and see here. Just watch. You'll see whether she's a girl who is pure and has stopped with promiscuity, one who has parted from flirtatiousness with boys. You can see it. It's evident. That person... Who said that isn't from our church either? They said, if you want to see a person who's really alive spiritually, just look at the face. You'll see. We can see that this girl has parted from flirting around with boys. We can see it written on her forehead. I was astonished. And I remembered Paul. Who wrote, I long to see your faces so that I will see where you are spiritually. I wish to see your faces so that I can see in what you still lack in your faith. 
abantu nobuso babantu those people took note even of the very face of people kodwa namhlanje abantu bayayipholisha befaka uphawute befaka amafutha bafaka upende awusaboni ukuthi kuyini kufanele ubaba kwenze ngoba inkazimulo kaJesus ayibonakali But now people make themselves up they use all sorts of oil and powder and this and that to make themselves up so that it's not evident it's because of the lack of glory that they do that Kodwa kulabo abakholwa ngempela benoJesus ophilayo enhlizweni ubabone phsweni bayaphawuleka ubone noma kuyinsizwa noma kuyintombazane abukho buhle ngaphandle ubuhle kufana nobuhle benkazimulo kaJesu uma kubonakala ebusweni bomuntu but if a person is upright and genuine and in a real relationship with Christ is truly alive it is unmistakable it is evident even on the face of that person ngisho nani batsifazana uma nifuna ukuzakha hlangana no Jesu zinikeleni ku Jesu ubonakala ubuhle bakhe ebusweni ngeke ndingi ukukhipha intibi intaha yemali ukuba nipendwe even you ladies if you want to really be beautified you will find that there's beauty in having the lord jesus christ in you you don't have to pay a fortune for makeup i tell you the truth just look at people right in their faces noma ezidakwa noma enesimile sonakeleyo mbuke nje uyafunde or if they are drunkards addicts addicts or immoral, immoral, immoral promiscuous just look and see and behold abanye ngesini sikhathi uma babuke uzoshaya ukuvala ukuthi au kanti uhlobo lo muntu some when you look at them one gets a shock and one asks what's actually going on with this person kusho ukuthi ihlabelelo kaningi zithi inkosi inkazimulo yakho mayibe phezu kwethu Often you find in the Psalms Lord let thy glory be upon us. Nomo umuntu ekhuluma nomo umuntu equla nomo umuntu eqabanga ubonakale uJesus ubuya ayokuda sidinga okunye asimdinga uJesus kanye nosathana abe wodwa abe yedwa usathana uJesus ube yena yedwa If a person sings or preaches or is just in the act of thinking let Jesus be evident we need no one else if it's the devil in a person well let the devil be evident but don't mix him with the Lord Jesus we want to see Christ only in your life abantu basezweni ke bayashesha uphawula bethi bekhona umsindo kodwa lapho bekhuluma kwathula kwathi cwaka the people in that service akakho onyakaza akakho owamemeza kwathula nje ilona lo ethi hey simanga sikankulu nkulu lesi which had been so noisy when these young people got up there was an instant quietness upon the stillness that came upon the audience and an amazement by the, as the people looked at these young people ujesu wathi Aksibona bonke abathi inkosi inkosi abayongene embusweni wezulu bengene ezulwini Jesus said not everyone who says lord lord will enter into heaven Kosi ngesigiliki ukuthi ukuthi ndingo wakho ndingo wakho Jesu athi ke cha Aksibona bonke abakhulumayo bethi bangaba ka Jesu kuphela abenza intando and this word in the greek when it says lord it means i am yours i am yours jesus but jesus says no not everyone who says i am yours lord is necessarily his only those who do the will of god tina bantu siyanaka lokho phume emlonyeni 
we people take much note of what comes out of the mouth. What do Jesu aganeliswa kuphume mlonyweni ufuna impilo yakho athi ufuna intando kaNkulunkulu kuwe. Jesus is not satisfied with your verbal assent. He wants life in you. He wants the real thing from you. Kusho ukuthi Jesu yahlukanisa inkulumo nempilo. Jesus discerns between your statement what you say and you what you profess and your life your profession and your practice only the will of god takes a person to heaven and his will is holy it is holy it is holy lobo bunqwele kufanele ukuthi ubonakale kithina noma uyingane noma umdala noma umhloboni hlophe noma umcundu ufuneke ubunqwele kuwe that holiness must be manifested in our lives it doesn't matter whether you're a man or woman child or adult black white whoever you are his glory must be manifested Seek the will of god don't be troubled by many other things there where you are you must be doing god's will Unina ga Andrew. Andrew. Umama ga Andrew. Wangsha elu kringe kse. Andrew's mother phoned me this morning. Wangke linda. And she told me a story. Ati, ngifunu kuti ngikvezele leto. She said, I want to uh, show you this thing. That early this morning I came upon an old book and I said to myself, let me open it. As I opened it, I found something written in 1951. And she said, I remember that time you were there in Lilienthal. Now her father was a pastor and a very clever, brilliant man. But he hadn't yet met with the Lord Jesus. His faith was in his head and not in his heart. Jesus was without and not within. He was working for the Lord, yet without the Lord. He was like this very text where they say, Lord, Lord, but Jesus himself says, I do not know you. Now in those times, he met with the Lord, with Jesus. Zingari 26. And she said, um, on that, that very day, which is today, the 26th, on that very day in, in 1951, 55 years. that is exactly 55 years ago, her father collected or brought together all their children
einige Opfer gespart. And said to his children, I want each one of you now to give me your testimony where you stand with God. Ute mina nasuga natangi kondao. And she said, I had to say, I don't know. There was nothing I could say. But I did say that very day, Lord Jesus, here is my heart. I give it to you right now. And then her father gave her a letter or a book. And they wrote together the 26th March. It's April now. March. March. Wrote 26th March 1951. Nganigela ngenshi ziyo yami kumkulu She said, she and her father wrote in that book on that very day, the 26th of March, 1951, I give my heart to the Lord today. And she said, that was truly my conversion. Now that was a wise pastor bringing his children together and demanding to know from them, where do you stand with regards to your relationship to God. You parents who are here, have you ever got your children together and asked them where they stand with God? It will be evident who's on the way to heaven, who's on the way to hell. You might be totally deceived by your the veneer of Christianity in your child. They speak the right language, they pray because they've got to pray, but they're not on the way to heaven. In the letter by Peter, in his epistle, he said, Let everyone be ready with an answer to anyone who questions him about his faith. To the point that I've asked the school children that each one should say where they stand regarding the Lord Jesus. And the one who says, well, I'm not able to talk, I'm too shy to speak. Well, I say that makes your faith to be useless. If you really have a faith, let it be known. Peter said, anyone has the right to demand from you regarding the faith and where you stand regarding the, the faith to question you. And then you can show them and say exactly. Can you stand up right now? And say where you stand regarding the Lord Jesus, what He has done for you. Tell us the sins that you lived in and whether Jesus has set you free from those sins. You who are in this service today. Have you got the testimony of your Lord Jesus Christ? 
Bathi yebo yebo. Kosi kosi. Singabako. Jesus said. Bayokala. Bathi kosi ngani. Sa profeta nge kamalako. Sa shumayela nge kamalako. Sa kipa matemoni. Senz imseven zemkulu nge kamalako. Ati yei. Many will come to me saying, But Lord, don't you remember that we prophesied in your name, that we cast out demons in your name and did many wonders? And Jesus said, I will declare to them, I do not know you. This text should shake us to the very core of our being. To every single person, even the preacher, let him ask himself, am I one of these to whom Jesus will say, I did not know you? said, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of unrighteousness. Now, biblically speaking, to know a person meant a great intimacy with that person. Without holding back, back, holding back anything, hiding anything from that person. <laughs> because Jesus, God, is light. There is no darkness in him. Adam knew Eve and she bore him a son. To say I know a person, biblically speaking, with regards to the greatest intimacy possible, that something comes about because of that intimacy. God said, Abraham, I know Abraham. I have known Abraham. So, so that he would have authority over his family and his whole household to keep my word. You parents who have children, who have, who have rebelled and have turned away from God, is there something that you have hid away from God? For you to have godly authority over your household is only through an intimacy with God meaning that you hold back nothing from him. Everything is in the light with him. Through that, there comes about an authority. God said, I have known Abraham so that he would have authority over his household to keep my word. Yeah. Yeah. 
kuze kuzaleko kunye empilweni yakho ukuzozaleka ukuthi ube nesithunzi ube namandla phambwengane zakho If you truly want to have a godly pastoral authority in your family of your children then you need to make sure for yourself that you are truly one with God that you have a true relationship with him akusizi ukuthi uyalingane zakho ushumayeze ube njengegogogo elingena lutho phakathi ukhala umsindo nje ngani na zikhona izinto empilweni zakho omgodlele zona uNkulunkulu omfihlele zona doesn't help if you bible punch your children and you are just an irritating noise you're an empty sounding drum there is nothing in it and you it produces no effect in your children ukuba nengana akusinto engcane ngoba zona ziyadalula abazali yes ingane ziyadalula abazali na uma usesikoleni ingane zakho zesikole zidolu zidalula wena thisha wena umfundisi wena ushuma ezabanye ibandla lakho lidalula wena to have children reveals what you are parent to have your school children reveals what you are like teacher to have a congregation reveals what you are like pastor ukuze umazi umkulunkulu umazi ujesu christ yena ngosuku lokwahlulelwa athi ngiyakwazi that you should know him jesus christ so that he can say on judgment day i have known this person uma uhlangana nuNkulunkulu ngempela uzoyifuna intando kaNkulunkulu if you truly meet with god you will seek his will upaulu be usawule paul had been so wamelana nevangeli wabopha abadzalwane wabazingela noma bebulawa athokoza jabulu He had been a rebel against the Christians. He would do everything in his means to fight against them and to arrest them. Anything that hurt the Christians pleased Saul. <laughs> But when lightning came down from heaven, heavenly light came down and jesus spoke and he immediately saul said lord what do you will for me to do bel wazo wapa upao ite yotwa nje ukuthi inkosi uthanda ukuba ngenze kuphina and he was changed into a paul he had one desire lord What is your will now? Uthambuzana nganyama negazi uyise ungumfarisi naye engumfarisi kodwa uthambuzana nganyama negazi Paul could say Ngenkosi Jesu uthanda ukuba ngikwenzele kuphi na I have not consulted with flesh or blood even though he was a Pharisee and his father was a Pharisee but because he met with Jesus Christ he could say I have not consulted with flesh or blood ta ukos uthanda ukuba ngenze kuphi na all he sought was lord what do you want me to do uma uhlangena ngempela no Jesu Kristu uzofuna ukwenza intando kaNkulunkulu noma use Sodom noma use Gomorrah noma kusiphi isikole noma kulipha idilopo uzofuna into yodwa ngifuna If you have truly met with Jesus Christ you will have one desire and that is to do his will even if you live in Sodom in Gomorrah whether you in this type of school or that type of school doesn't matter where you are you will live for him Paul was totally surrendered to Jesus Christ after just three days he was filled with the spirit kodwa namhla ungathola abantu seku 30 years noma iminyaka emithathu behlangene nojesu kodwa bakadwali ngomoya ondwele 
but today you can find people who have been Christians for 10, 20, 30 years but not yet filled with the Spirit. Things went deep with Paul. He said, I don't seek my father's will or my mother's will. I seek now what God has to say. Now you know that I have six daughters. Of those who are married, four. Four of them. Each, each one came to me and said, I do it, I get married because I feel it is the will of God. Their husbands also said that. All right. And they said, they feel it is the will of God. I said, fine, all right, but I have been observant and I continue to be, to see, to watch their lives, whether my daughters or sons-in-law, do they, were they truly genuine in saying that it was the will of God? And, And this pair today, I say the same. I will observe them and my daughters who are getting married, I will be watching them and considering their life and the young men to whom they are getting married as well. To say that you are doing God's will is not just a superficial thing. I know with many who, when it comes to the time of marriage, they say, this is the will of the Lord. It's the first time they hear God's voice, and with many, it's the last time. We don't want that. We want the genuine thing, not a Christian that is just plastic and artificial. We want the genuine, real article. If it is the will of God, it remains the will of God. It is something constant. It will persist right to the end that this person is walking in the will of God. That person's very life, so that it is inscribed upon them, evident upon their foreheads, this person is in the will of God. When a person wakes up, they get up for the will of God. When they go to sleep, they go to sleep in the will of God. Everything in their life is about God's will. 
kodwa impilo yakhe inje kubi but if you find a person who who says it is the will of god but their life is opposite it is awful abajuda endulo ngesikhathi ka jesu now the jews of old in the times of jesus kakhula basegalile especially those from galilee uma bethembisile When they would get engaged, they wouldn't visit each other. A person who was engaged um, would be looked down upon if they would uh, be visiting each other. But on the day of marriage, they would come together. for the first time intombi be intombi into insizwa be insizwa ntsi kuze kube usuku lomshado the young man and the young girl they would both be virgins right till the day of marriage bebe ngavakashelani no messing around and visiting each other abajuda babe nempawe intathu into yokuqala uma ingane zyo 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 thembisa bekuphumelana nabazali Firstly when the Jews would get engaged in that time they would do it in agreement with their parents then they would come together and it would be announced the engagement was not just a lighthearted affair it was something of real deep meaning and then their day of marriage i like that I don't like it when young men getting engaged then they start with um their flirtatiousness and uh, making cell phone calls to each other or messages to each other making eyes at, at each other to me that is promiscuity Uma ngambona u Esther ekwenza lokho ngizothi Esther bye bye hamba awuhlali nami endlini usuke ube namehla abanjalo kumfana uthintane naye umshayele ngamasela awa amasela mahle mabi ubfebe okukhona namhlanje namasela bethintane bazalwane intando kaNkulunkulu isifundisa ubundwele ubundwele aguqanga uma ngale kwekhona usuya hlela usuya khuluma kodwa laphambi komfundisi phambi kwebandla ubuzenza ube muhle phenduka wena mzenzisi isikhoko singe sakho uma ungaphendukana and if i see esther behaving in that manner being flirtatious and secretly uh, talking with boys around the corner i would say goodbye out of my house i don't want that um cell phones have their good side but they have their evil side it is used also for great wickedness that is not walking in the will of god bekufika umkhwenyane upaul izolo abanye bangishayela ukucinga fundisa uzola lapho ngithi eh ningakhula umnami haba kajadi kusabanda akukho uxhumele phakathi kwethu yesterday kodwa ngosuku lomshado sokuzoba khona uxhumane okuhle futhi kodwa kwama nje kuse umthembiso umthembiso wodwa ukushada kodwa they asked me yesterday when paul had come where should he put up, be put up to sleep i said well it's of no interest of mine remember this is only for engagement and engagement there is no relative arrangement only Bonine when they were emi. married umkhwenyane emi la indoda kazimile la ngiphakathi kwabo ngiwudonga you saw he the uh, bridegroom to be standing on one side of me my daughter on the other side 
There's no contact. I'm like a wall between them. On the day of their wedding, of course, I am not between them. Then they are totally united. But remember, Jesus can come back any time. He could come back next week. Do we want something that is defiled when Jesus comes back? We want We want a pure bride. Jesus wants a pure bride that is without fleck or blemish. And when she, the bride, walks in in a white dress and veil, that symbolizes virginity. I have not been touched by a man. It has become a rarity for a girl to still be a virgin today. The norm is opposite. It's become Sodom and Gomorrah. But God looks on. He still is patient. He looks to you to repent. Promiscuity has gone to such an extent that now you find girls who have love affairs with girls and boys with boys, homosexuality in that, perversion. I read a very sad story these days uh, in the newspaper about two girls that had got married. They had a little boy, a little son. Like South Africa. We have Mugoti, in Tombazan, in Shatten, in Tombazan, Numpan, Shatten, Numpan. Manje Lava Matombazan, a shat. Ava Numpanongan. Manje Umpan, a good two Agulen Tombazan, yes, me. Umelo Guti, Atibaba. Now, as you know, it is legal. It is uh, homosexuals can get married to each other. Now, in this particular case, this lesbian couple, this. Uh, the one said to the other, I want this, our boy, to call you father or dad. Those who have voted, vote, have voted for this. I'm shy. I'm shy. But this little boy just couldn't call him, call the this girl, woman dad, the one who wanted to be named as father. And so he refused. He said, Auntie, till she beat him up so badly that he died of his injuries. Now, 
nithi nikulokho amakhosikazi nani izintombi baze bayibulale ingane ngoba ingane ngavumi ukubisa isithandwa sikanina isithandukazi ukuthi baba there was kwehluli ingane ukuthi ngikambiza ukuthi baba engowesifazana enamabele they were both so angered and so upset that they abused this child so violently that eventually this little boy died. Seems like they are white people. I'm not sure. But I ask you, uh, black people, why is it if you see whites who behave in such a manner that you copy them why do you imitate them often in the past i've said i'm so happy that god has called me to be in africa because they don't do these perverted things that the whites do but Today it's a different story. They've fallen into the same things. I'd said the Africans will not do such low down things. That an, an African at that time I'd said black girls won't get dressed like white girls do they'll never wear skin tight clothing like those do who are whites but it's changed instead you'll find because of this promiscuous spirit they want to show as much as possible where where is the will of God in this you see this couple then that couple a girl and a boy together girl girl together boy boy together it is absolutely corrupt even though God cracks his whip they pay no attention they do not heed his warning read in revelations how they will die how they will uh, die of various types of diseases but they continue they persevere in their rebellion of promiscuity. But I ask you, why will you die? Why do you want to die? Why do you, why do you not rather say today, I choose the will of God. I want to live in God's way and do His will from this moment on. Why should I live like the heathen do any longer? And I say, Lord, and I say, Lord, I thank you. Not that I deserve it. I am not anything that I should deserve such a thing that my daughters should all follow you in this way and should get engaged and married in this way that... Um, my wife and I got engaged in this way and got married. She bore me these six daughters and that they have followed the Lord in this way. 
ormai se fai ti baba, baba, na inconsciência, inconsciência, na ngepela ya figi inconsci, ya mtata, ya mtata. Then the Lord took my wife till she said, I see the king coming to take me. And indeed, the king took her. And I say to all of my daughters, follow your mother in that. You be faithful to the Lord and living in this way. Otherwise, you are just like illegitimate children from the bush. And I say to my sons in law as well, I have entrusted my daughters to you and I watch your life, I observe you till I die. You will also have children, but if you are not fully living for the Lord, how will your children end? How will you have authority to demand of your children that they follow the Lord if you yourself don't do the will of God? I close now. I ask every one of you, whether you are a child, elderly, whether you are Indian colored, white from Germany, from South Africa, whoever and whatever you are, do you know the will of God? Are you doing the will of God? Only that person who does the will of the Father will enter into heaven. Your profession is not enough. It's not just what you say with your lips. What you are, who you are, is really what matters. We are still headed for judgment. On that final day, the Father is not going to ask me whether I know you or not. He will ask his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, have you known this person? And he will say yes, or whether he did not know that person. The reality, the substance, the truth will come to light on that day. Let's bow our heads. Work, O Lord, and inscribe your words upon our minds and hearts. Write your words so indelibly that no rubber can ever rub them out.
Lord, the one who has not yet chosen to do your will, may he say so now. And choose now. Ah, Shogaye. No Ninaga Andrew. Eighty fifty five years. Zule. Nothing goes in Yamnig and Sizioyam. And be able to say with Andrew's mother, fifty five years ago, I said, Yes, Lord Jesus, I give my heart to you. Kosi. We are Sazi Song. Lord. We are Zuguti. In the way to say sing umile chuku. Ini nawe. You know us all. You know us so well whether we have made an absolute surrender to you or not. Futi labo abangumile. Abangume uze gube sekrine ni. Uze gupume umpefumulo krina. And Lord, those who've made that decision, may they persevere right to the end till their last breath. Work mightily, O Lord. That there might be joy in heaven and crying in hell. Amen. Amen.